Tonight on the News at 10, it's going to be a long summer for crews at Montana State University. The repairs are underway. And a racy race for a good cause passes through Bozeman. Plus, more jobs lost, but President Obama is upbeat. The latest on the economy. I'm Mark Haka, looking pretty good for the fireworks displays Sunday. I'll have my first alert forecast. The news with Jonathan Athens is next. This is the News Channel, earning your trust. You're watching the News at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Hail, heavy rain and strong wind has made for some wild weather in Montana. A lot of folks in parts of our state are still repairing damage from this week's severe weather. And with that, let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Mark Haka for a look at what we can expect as we head into the 4th of July weekend. Well, a preview into the weekend, a little unsettled first part of the weekend on Saturday, maybe a few showers, but then a nice ending just in time for the fireworks display Sunday night. In the meantime, tonight I wanted to show you yet another great, great photo of the storm that passed through the Bozeman area Wednesday afternoon. Tom Porter of Bozeman sent me this dandy. I mean, that is a scary looking storm. Of course, it did produce one to two inch diameter hail in the Bozeman area. Tonight, showers and thunderstorms exiting the northeast part of the state, but we still have a few sprinkles and showers out there. Notice down around Boise, there's a little upper level storm system pivoting our way from that, and we're going to be looking at variable cloudiness, and it's still tonight a chance of a few showers and sprinkles. We're not expecting anything severe nor widespread or heavy. Partly cloudy, chance of a shower or a sprinkle, 44 in the Bozeman area. Same forecast for Butte all the way down to a very chilly 39 degrees. Again, unsettled early, nice late in the weekend. My first alert forecast is coming up. Bozeman's massive hailstorm hit Montana State University. 1,000 broken windows and hundreds of thousands in damage. The News Channel's Mike Mestis reports. At Montana State University, Facilities Director Jeff Butler puts it best for how Wednesday's hailstorm impacted the school. It just puts a big dent in, in our plans for the summer, the things we were trying to accomplish now kind of go back on hold. A dent in projects this summer and quite literally dents all around campus. Thousands of windows across campus fought the storm head on. Problem was, lots of windows lost the battle. The price to replace those windows or repair those windows varies quite a bit, whether it's a, a single pane of glass down at ground level or a larger window that's, you know, nine or ten stories above the ground. Now the skies have cleared and given Jeff and his team time to tally up the cost of the damage. And the result? The cost on that could be anywhere from, from $150,000 maybe to $200,000. Add in the cost of countless holes and roofs all over, and the storm of 2010 could be a costly one for MSU. Jeff says state insurance is handling it. Claims adjusters will arrive next week to take a look at the damage. We're working with Helena on that. For now, the best these guys can do is patchwork on the destruction that has already been done. The hundreds of black dots are tar that will keep any more weather out for now. And Hapner Hall. Um, was totally just demolished, just got clobbered. And for most of the summer... Starting Wednesday afternoon, things right. got real busy. Jeff will have to shift his focus from other summer projects to getting the school fixed up before students return in the fall. We'll try to get everything up to speed as quick as we can. In Bozeman, Mike Mestis for the News Channel. Jeff says state adjusters could be taking a look at the damage for the next few weeks. Family and friends gathered early today to remember Montana farmer Dale Folkboard. Dale is best known for having built his family's business, Wheat Montana Farms. He died Sunday at the age of 72. Dale had dropped out of school to pursue his love of farming. The company he founded started out as a small bakery. Today, Wheat Montana supplies grain and flour throughout the country, and its bakery supplies bread to nine states. Dale's memorial service was held at his farm near Three Forks. He is survived by his wife of 53 years, Francis, sons Daryl and Dean, grandchildren Cody, Hillary, and Haley. Our condolences to the family. A Butte man accused of child molestation admitted he raped three boys while working at a daycare center. Carl Shell cut a deal with prosecutors. In exchange for his guilty plea, prosecutors dropped two charges. Shell worked at Learning Playhouse Center. It's out of business now. Police arrested Shell back in 2009 after allegations he molested an eight-year-old boy. Shell faces a maximum of 100 years in prison and a $50,000 fine on each of the two counts. 
A Nebraska man is facing robbery charges. Bozeman police arrested 22-year-old John Michael Owens in the early morning hours of July 22nd. They believe he robbed the Main Street gas station at gunpoint. According to the charging documents, Owens fled from police on a stolen bicycle. Police found cash, a silver handgun, and a black handkerchief in a backpack Owens had on him. When they did a background check, police found Owens has three misdemeanor warrants for identity theft and one misdemeanor warrant for petty theft out of Virginia. Owens appeared in court today. The judge set his bail at $70,000. And federal agents and local law enforcement officers over a two-week span arrested 10 illegal immigrants from Mexico in Gallatin County. A spokesman for Immigration and Customs Enforcement says seven of the 10 are members of the Serrano gang or are associates of that gang. The arrests are part of Operation Community Shield, a program that the federal government launched five years ago in conjunction with local law enforcement agencies. Community Shield's objective is to locate, arrest, convict, and deport foreign-born street gang members. The federal government did not provide mug shots or the names of the men it arrested. Agents arrested eight in Bozeman and two in West Yellowstone. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Montana is prosecuting one of the illegal immigrants for illegally re-entering the country. U.S. immigration officials arrested three Saudi Arabian students on the University of Montana campus last week and now U.M. officials say it was a misunderstanding. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says the students overstayed their visas. Federal agents held them for several days before ICE says the students were released pending hearings. Top university staff say it was a mistake, and ICE officials apologize to the students and university administrators. Teams have recovered the bodies of the four people that died in a plane crash near the National Bison Range on Sunday. The recovery mission required a saw team to clear trees and underbrush. The FAA has reached the site to perform an investigation into what brought the plane down. The coroner will determine how Melissa Weaver, Eric Hoffer, and pilot Sonny Kress and Brian Williams died. The plane crashed in rugged backcountry while they were sightseeing. Hundreds in the flooded valley crowded a church to remember a Montana soldier who was murdered. 21-year-old Byron Whitcomb. Investigators allege a civilian murdered Whitcomb and his roommate at Fort Polk in Louisiana. Still, no word on the motive. Whitcomb leaves behind a wife and a two-year-old daughter. The Army bestowed full military honors. People remembered Whitcomb as a one-of-a-kind person and athlete. He was just a good person, generous. He was a good kid, mischievous just like all boys. And uh, I, I would just say he was a, a real American boy. FBI agents continue to investigate the case. We'll bring you the latest as it becomes available. The holiday weekend has barely started, and there's already one suspected DUI crash on the books. It happened on Interstate 90, about 30 miles west of Missoula. Medics transported one man by ambulance to a local hospital. We're told his injuries are not life-threatening. The highway patrol tells us alcohol and speed were probably factors in the crash. Came down the ramp without braking at about 75 or 80 mile an hour. Went ahead and lost control in the shoulder. It's a sharp ramp here at Sear. Uh, basically went straight into an embankment. When he hit the embankment, he began a counterclockwise rotation, and which caused the vehicle to trip and roll over the top of this berm. Captured and killed a male black bear near Whitefish. They say this bear had gotten used to human food and became aggressive. It pushed on windows and doors, killed chickens and geese, and got into bird feeders and garbage. The bear weighed 150 pounds and was cinnamon colored. Bear managers checked with landowners to make sure they had the right bear. A Fish, Wildlife and Park spokesman said the bear had become too dangerous to people and relocating it was not an option. This is the second time in 10 days that Montana wildlife agents have had to kill a bear because of its behavior. The four Minnesota women drove through Bozeman bearing a little skin for a cause. The News Channel's Jessica Debus tells us why. We're raising eyebrows, we're raising attention. I mean, who wouldn't want to see four beautiful girls in a truck? <laughs> you might do a double take when you see this frilled up black Dodge. We are hot and sweaty. We haven't showered for about 24 hours. So These four women drove from Mankato, Minnesota to Bozeman in their bras. The honks on the road, the thumbs up from people. And the drive isn't over yet. The journey ends in Portland, Oregon. But the road trip isn't just for the thrill of bearing some skin. But it's not just about the four of us. It's about millions of women out there, um, their family, their friends that are affected. 
It's all to raise money for the Susan G. Komen Foundation and support breast cancer research. And with each state that we're in, whatever money we raise in that state goes directly to that affiliate for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. This has been way outside my comfort zone. This is not something I would normally do, but because it's a great cause, I have been willing to do it. My grandmother unfortunately passed away from breast cancer, so it's a really strong meaning for me to be able to do this. The women have met many people touched by the fight against breast cancer. Um, people stopping us at rest stops saying, you know, thank you for what you're doing, I'm a survivor. Uh, when you get creative and innovative and taking something as simple as a trip with your friends and adding a purpose to it, that that inspires people. And, and even though they drive for a serious cause, it's all still about having fun. Lots of laughing and just really good times, bonding with each other. So if you're driving down I-90 in the next couple of days and you see this black decorated truck, make sure to honk for the ladies in pink. Reporting in Bozeman, Jessica Davis for the News Channel. The goal is to raise $5,000. So far, they've raised $2,000. If you'd like to follow their journey, log on to our website and click on the road trip for a Cure Fast Link. Well, coming up, the latest on men's and women's kayaking championships. That's in sports. But first, America's birthday is two days away. Sunshine or rain? Chief Meteorologist Mark Haken will let us know what we can expect. Your complete first alert forecast is coming up after the break. Stay with us. This is the News at 10. This week, Jay's got new shows, and look who's stopping by. Steve Carell, Jason Siegel, Jersey Shore's Jay Wow, Jane Lynch, and animal expert Dave Salmoni. Plus headlines. Get down at the Funkmeister wedding. All new Tonight Show, this week on NBC. Hi, I'm Drew Barrymore, and I'm hosting SNL This Week with musical guest Regina Spector. Who's ready to laugh? I am. Are you? No, not yet. Me neither. What about now? Wait. Wait. Uh, okay, now. Okay, now? Oh! Don't miss out on new appliance rebates. Vans continues to offer low sale prices on name brand appliances during the Montana Cash for Clunkers rebate program. A side-by-side -side refrigerator is only $6.99. With the combined Vans sale price and rebate, a GE dishwasher with smart dispense and a stainless interior is just $4.99. That's a $300 savings. Buy select GE appliances and get a free upgrade to stainless. These are the lowest prices in years, with or without a rebate. Montana's Cash for Clunker funds are limited, so hurry into Vans for these great deals while they last. During the 4th of July event at your Ashley Furniture Home Store, you choose how you want to save. Choose from discounts of up to 10, 15, or 20% off. Or pay no interest for 48 months. Comfortable sofas, beautiful beds, and gorgeous five-piece dining rooms at Ashley Direct Prices. Plus, choose your discount or pay no interest for 48 months. It's your freedom of choice, but you have to hurry. The 4th of July event ends soon at your Ashley Furniture Home Store. Montana-owned and community-involved. You're going to love this place. Sometimes I just want a great steakhouse sandwich with crispy onions, peppercorn sauce, and oven-roasted, thinly sliced roast beef. So I'm going to get one right now at Arby's. Now get Arby's new steakhouse sub combo with curly fries and a drink, only at Arby's. ShopLocalMontana.com at KTVM, we feel that it's our job to let you know about the things that affect your life. Whether it's breaking news, changes in the weather, changes in public policy. We all care what happens here. We're all in this thing together, staying connected to the things that affect our community. And now, AMS certified meteorologist Mark Haka. Well, good Friday evening, Southwest Montana. Earlier this afternoon, we had one lone severe thunderstorm develop. It did dump some hail in the Manhattan area, moved off to the northeast, and then it moved out. And since then, we've had improving weather conditions, but still some redeveloping sprinkles and showers. Let's take a look at our weekend. It is, of course, the holiday weekend for the 4th of July. We have a, an unsettled start but a great finish, and even with the unsettled start, it's not going to rain all of the time, but certainly we have a chance for a few showers and sprinkles tonight and again tomorrow. We'll keep the yellow on the map, then we'll put up the green for July 4th on Sunday and Monday. Now, Monday, there's a slight chance of rain, but for the 4th of July, partly to mostly sunny and mild temperatures, although a couple degrees below average 
will be very, very pleasant. What's going on? Well, a couple of things to look at here. We have a cold front moving into the eastern part of the state, taking uh, the showers and thunderstorms into the northeast areas and leaving us in cooler air. So certainly cooler today than yesterday across the area. We have clear to partly cloudy skies, but notice this cloudiness down here in Boise. What's happening, we have an upper level storm system over the Pacific Northwest, put a counterclockwise circulation around that. There's a little piece of energy rotating around that low and it'll uh, pivot up into Southwest Montana. So I think we'll see some uh, increased cloud cover later on tonight and we'll keep it unsettled through tomorrow. There will be a chance of those isolated sprinkles and showers across the area. Nothing severe, heaviest of rain is by far to the north of us and to the east of the Great Falls area. A closer look at our area, we've had an area of light showers, maybe a couple of embedded thunder showers, heaviest of precipitation around White Sulphur Springs, back down into the Townsend area, then southwestward to I-90, just to the east of Whitehall, over to Trident, and finally out toward Butte. Here's Butte, and uh, to the west of Butte, around Deer Lodge, back toward Anaconda, an area of sprinkles and showers, maybe a lone thunder shower to the southwest of Twin Bridges, and north of the Dillon area. Movement of most of this is to the northeast. And temperatures around the region on the cool side out there, already down to 54 in Butte. North-northwest winds at 16 miles per hour. 59 at Gallatin Field, 58 at MSU in Bozeman. Northwest winds at 9 miles per hour. The high today at MSU, 72. The low, 52. Gallatin Field, 79 for the high, 53 for the low. And Butte, the high today, 65 and the low 44. Tonight, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy. A few redeveloping showers around the area. 42 in Dillon, 47 Helena, down to 40 at West Yellowstone, 44 in the Bozeman area, and Butte's gonna have a chilly night, down to 39 with that chance of a shower. Tomorrow still, the cold air aloft associated with the upper level storm will generate enough instability, some isolated instability, showers and sprinkles developing, 66 in Dillon, 69 Helena, 71 in Bozeman, northwest winds five to 15 miles per hour, and 61 degrees in the Butte area, northwest winds five to 15 miles per hour. In the extended in Bozeman, Nice on July 4th, Sunday, 78. Slight chance of rain Monday, then lots of sunshine Tuesday through Friday and a warming trend by the latter part of next week. Highs in the upper 80s. In Butte, 69 Sunday, 67. Slight chance of rain Monday. 70s Tuesday through Thursday, 80 next Friday with sunshine. Lows in the 30s over the weekend and the 40s next week. Then we're back slightly above average in temperatures July 10th to the 16th and fairly dry weather around the area. Yet another great photo. Boy, look at this perspective of the storm in Bozeman a couple nights ago, actually two days ago in the afternoon. Sarah Martin of Bozeman sent me that dandy. Have a great, safe, and fun 4th of July weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Later on, a Butte basketball icon is retiring. Jeff has the story, but first, some Montana students and their teacher are making national news because of the way they're able to map caves. That story and more after the break. Stay with us. KTVM TV's weather team, first to alert you when severe weather is approaching. Spas and Home Recreation has a full line of Brunswick and Draw Knife pool tables designed to fit any decor from rustic to European elegance. Make your home the place where friends and family gather. Visit our expanded showroom, Spas and Home Recreation, four corners of the light. Hello. Check out my heels. Ultra high, super pointy. I never take them off. How do I do it? Dr. Scholl's for her insoles. With massaging gel. So thin they fit right in. Shut up. You're fabulous. Dr. Scholl's for her. Build your better breakfast at Subway. For only $2.50, get a Western Egg White Muffin Melt made to your order and add a 16-ounce cup of freshly brewed Seattle's Best Coffee. Try the new $2.50 breakfast combo at Subway. Pacific Steel and Recycling. We pay for all recyclable materials and scrap metals, including vehicles and appliances at our original Bozeman site. New to Belgrade is our facility solely dedicated to steel product sales and service for any job. With our state-of-the-art equipment, we can custom cut steel down to your precise measurements, helping to ease our impact on the environment for more than three decades. We are a Northwest tradition built on trust. Pacific Steel and Recycling. 
Patients come from all over Montana to have surgery with Dr. William R. Mueller. Dr. Mueller has been board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery for over 20 years. Dr. Mueller is Southwest Montana's only plastic surgeon who is a member of ASAPS, the mark of distinction in cosmetic plastic surgery. To learn more about Southwest Montana Plastic Surgery, visit our website at swmontanaplasticsurgery.com. Van Dyken Drilling, providing you with water while helping you enjoy it. This is Kurt with Van Dyke and Drilling. Are you experiencing low or fluctuating water pressure? Does your pump frequently turn on and off? These are common problems that are caused by a faulty pressure tank, leaks, a worn out pump, or neglected filters. If left, these problems can lead to further damage of your water system. Give us a call today at 388-2003. Serving Southwest Montana for over 80 years, Van Dyke and Drilling, your water professionals. Bring your workout experience to the privacy of your own home with fitness equipment from Spas and Home Recreation. Let us help you meet your fitness goals with trusted name brands, plus warranties and service to put your mind at ease. Spas and Home Recreation, four corners of the light. Watch the best part of your day. Ellen, weekdays at 4. Welcome back, everyone. Town Pump has announced it's buying Flying J Travel Centers in Billings, Great Falls, and Rocker. All three locations have a convenience store, truck fueling station, casino, and restaurant. They'll keep doing business under the Flying J brand. Jackrabbit Reds will continue to lease and operate the casinos. Town Pump will run the restaurant in Butte, while Denny's will take over the Billings and Great Falls restaurants. The Salt Lake City-based Flying J has been operating under bankruptcy since December 2008. Executives did not make public details of the sale. Town Pump spokeswoman Maureen Kennelly says the company has met with Flying J employees and offered them jobs with Town Pump. And for the second time, the House of Representatives passed a bill that would settle a $3.4 billion settlement between the feds and American Indians. Eloise Cobo filed the suit 14 years ago. It claims the federal government swindled half a million Native Americans out of billions of dollars in land trust royalties. Earlier this year, Cobell announced a settlement. It was written in a contentious jobs bill that failed in the Senate. Now the settlement is attached to a bill that authorizes funding for a troop surge in Afghanistan. The House approved it late Thursday before the holiday break. Once again, the House did the right thing and uh, very overwhelmed over that second time that they've done it. And I just hope that the Senate uh, comes forward with their approval after the 4th of July holidays. The Senate comes back from recess on July 12th, and it must pass the bill and be signed by the president before the settlement's approved. We'll let you know what happens. There's mixed news on the economy. The unemployment rate dropped to 9.5 percent in June, but the number of Americans working also dropped as a flood of people left the labor force. President Obama struck an upbeat tone. Steve Hanelsman has the story. So first I want to start with... As expected, a quarter million census workers got laid off in June. Private hiring increased by just 83,000, but because a lot of Americans gave up looking for a job, the unemployment rate fell two-tenths to 9.5 percent. President Obama said we're on the right track. And to every American who is looking for work, I promise you, we are going to keep on doing everything that we can. This is not a strong report, but government experts are worried. We have not yet seen strong, sustained job growth. Factory orders fell a big drop after nine months of gains. Retail sales are down, fewer retail workers being hired. Unemployment could rise to 10 plus percent, say some economists. Yes, well, in the next six months, we will be back over double digits. Republicans blamed Team Obama. Americans don't see an economy in recovery. They see a White House seemingly incapable of protecting our beaches or getting people back to work. But the job loss began and peaked under President Bush. With President Obama and the Democratic policies, we have started trending in the right direction. Still, students at the University of Maryland are scared. Everyone I've talked to is always looking for jobs, especially like now. And looking for the start of a strong recovery with lots of hiring. The touchy political issue of extending unemployment benefits will remain unsettled till the Senate is back from a break in 10 days. And two Big Fork High School students and their teacher are making national news with a unique cave mapping system. National Geographic and several national parks already noticed their works. Now, students Ernie Cottle and Tia Baker will travel to San Diego and present with their teacher 
the mapping system. The National Parks doesn't have enough money to map caves, but the Cave Club in Big Fork does it for free, and now the students' work will be used by the park system. It's an incredible win-win situation. Um, the Park Service, the Forest Service agencies like this, due to staff reductions and, and budget uh, cuts and things like that, they're not able to um, finally monitor some of these resources like the things in caves. And with just a little bit of specialized training, um, my students are able to f fill some of these empty niches. The Cave Club students are hoping to help other national parks like Glacier National Park map their caves, but they have to hope some funding comes through for them first. And so now let's turn this over to a man who's going to chart the course for sports. Man, it's been so <laughs> long. Had to reopen that wound. There you uh, go. Coming up, Butte High's <laughs> basketball coach has stepped down. I'll tell you about it. Sports is next. KTVM 6 and 42, Butte and Bozeman's News Channel. Earning your trust. When my family's on the go, eating at home can be tough. That's why I call Pat Pizza at Tarantino's. We're able to enjoy great tasting pizza at home. Delivery's fast, free. And the pizza's always hot. Put that in your phone. Tarantino's Pizzeria. Handmade. Baked in tradition. Hey. Trading Company with three locations in Bozeman. Far Automotive, your local Napa Auto Care Center for more than 32 years. We're your full service auto repair center taking care of you and your vehicle. Ensure your vehicle is ready for summer, whether for a short road trip or a long vacation, by taking steps now to prevent a large repair. Come in for a tune up, brake check, or flushes. You'll save and keep your vehicle in peak performance. Far Automotive, your local Napa Auto Care Center. Come see us for your next service. Why not experience amazing sleep on the most highly recommended bed in America? Why not experience a Tempur-Pedic from Mattress King? Ask me what it's like to get your best night's sleep every night. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Right now at Mattress King, you can try out a Tempur-Pedic for free. Plus, as an added bonus, enjoy a luxurious Tempur-Pedic pillow for free. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Ask me about staying asleep. Experience this life-changing sleep for yourself. Don't miss your opportunity to try out the most highly recommended bed in America for free. Get into Mattress King today. Main Street Quilting Company has moved, but not too far. We are right next door to our old location on East Main Street, and we have become Bozeman's newest authorized Bernina dealership. Main Street Quilting Company is still the largest quilting store in Bozeman, with thousands of bolts to choose from. And now we've added the best sewing equipment, Bernina Sewing Systems, to make your creations even more beautiful. Get everything you need for your arts and crafting at Main Street Quilting Company, now in our new home at 128 East Main Street in downtown Bozeman. When my family's on the go, eating at home can be tough. That's why I call Pat Pizza at Tarantino's. We're able to enjoy great tasting pizza at home. Delivery's fast, free, and the pizza's always hot. Put that in your phone. Tarantino's Pizzeria. Handmade. Baked in tradition. Hey. KTVM TV's weather team. First to alert you when severe weather is approaching. Welcome back to sports, everybody. Hope your holiday weekend is off to a great start. The Butte High basketball team is in the market for a new head coach as John Thatcher resigned from his post as a leader of the Bulldogs. Thatcher has coached Butte for 10 seasons and actually tried to retire for the past two years, only to be talked back into it both times by the school board. Over the past decade, Butte High posted a 114 and 108 record, twice finishing as the state runners-up in 2004 and 2007. Thatcher's son, who was an assistant coach on the team, just moved to Wisconsin, and Thatcher said he wanted to have more time to spend with his family and grandkids. Speaking of Butte, the Miners were in action again today in Helena for the Key Cell Tournament, looking to improve on a pair of losses yesterday. This is against Columbia Basin out of Washington. The out-of-towners are up big in the third. That single scores a run, puts the River Dogs up a touchdown, 7-0. Next hitter is Matt Herbert. He strokes a single to left. Two more runs score to make it 9-0 Columbia Basin. Butte ends up falling for a third straight game, 11-zip. 
the final. Some signing news for the MSU track team. The Bobcats inked Gage Pickering out of Billings Skyview. He's a defending AA state champ in the 100 and 200 meter dashes. The Cats also picked up a pair of javelin throwers, including CMR's Jessica Morin. On to hockey now, the Bozeman Ice Dogs made a pretty cool move today, announcing an affiliation with the Chicago Hitmen out of the North American Hockey League. What this means is that any Ice Dogs who are deemed able or ready can move up and play in the NAHL with Chicago, while any Hitmen can be sent down to play in the NORPAC with Bozeman. The NAHL is designed as a developmental league for 16 to 20 year olds. So far this offseason, Chicago has already acquired four players who were in the North Pack last year. Well, we've been talking all week about the United States Freestyle Kayak Championships that wrapped up today here in Western Montana. The top five men's and women's competitors were decided yesterday and will make up the U.S. national team. But today, those five got back in the water to determine a champion. Out of the feature event, the senior men's K-1 finals. This is Tennessee Stephen Wright. He broke 1,000 points at all three of his rides. The last one scoring 1,380 points. That was the best run of the day gave him the crown. This is 17-year-old Jason Craig out of Nevada. He was a second place finisher. He nets 1,265 points on this ride. Dustin Urban was third and Eric Jackson rounded out the top four. Over to the women's event where the world champion Emily Jackson was a favorite, part of that dominant Jackson family. Now, I'm going to preface this by pleading my innocence here. Not really a freestyle kayaking connoisseur, so I couldn't tell you where, but I do know somewhere in this run there's a Space Godzilla trick thrown in. Jackson scored 470 points on the ride, took home first place. Dr. Jesse Stone was the runner-up, yet she's an actual real doctor. This run gives her 310 points. Aaron Clancy, with a huge foot flip, was the third place finisher. One last note, the Bozeman Spikes fall to the Billings Blue Jays 18 to 10 at the Howard Rain Legion Tournament in Bozeman. The Spikes finished pool play with two wins to one loss. That's it for sports for this week. We're back to wrap up the show in a few minutes. At Joe's, we specialize in great tastes from around the world. We should know. We've tried every product we sell. You can too. Tell us what you like and we'll transform you into an instant expert. Joe's Parkway Market. Every visit is out of this world. What will you discover next? Stop by for a visit. Now located downtown at Heyday or at the original, still on College Street. Are you ready? It's wildfire season. Is your family ready with a preparedness plan? Prepare by creating a firewise zone. Keep your lawn trimmed and gutters free of debris. Make an emergency supply kit. Plan in advance of how you will contact family members and help neighbors in need. Stay informed of local emergency and evacuation plans. Go to ready.mt.gov and get ready, Montana. This message from the Governor's Office of Community Service. Engaging citizens in service. It's a matter of subjects or citizens, and apparently Thomas Jefferson had a change of mind between the two. Using technology, preservation scientists at the Library of Congress have discovered that an early draft of the Declaration of Independence, Jefferson wrote the word subjects when referring to the American public, but he changed his mind somewhere along the line, blotting out the word in favor of citizens. Jefferson probably could have used something he didn't have, a bottle of whiteout or an eraser, because he apparently used his hand to wipe the ink off before it dried to make his corrections. And that is going to do it for us. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. We'll see you Monday at 6 and 10. Be safe, everybody. Jimmy Fallon will be seen.